how China is closing the gap with the United States in the semiconductor race. The semiconductor industry is at the heart of the technological rivalry between the United States and China. The US is trying to maintain its edge by investing in chip manufacturing and limiting China's access to advanced technology. But China is not giving up. It's making rapid progress in chip production and attracting global talent to its shores. The Biden administration needs to rethink its strategy to address the challenge posed by China's rise in the semiconductor sector. Before we continue, if you like what we talk about on this channel and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. I'll give you a few seconds to do that and then we'll continue. The US invests in chip production. Semiconductors or chips are the tiny devices that power everything from smartphones to supercomputers. They are essential for the development of artificial intelligence, 5G, quantum computing, and other emerging technologies. The US has been the leader in chip innovation and design, but it has outsourced most of the chip manufacturing to East Asia, especially Taiwan and South Korea. This has created a vulnerability in the US supply chain, as the global demand for chip exceeds the supply, and geopolitical tensions threaten the stability of the chip market. To address this issue, the US Congress passed the Chips and Science Act in August 2023, a law that approves subsidies and tax breaks to help jumpstart the renewed production of advanced semiconductors on American soil. The law aims to support the domestic chip industry and reduce the dependence on foreign suppliers. It also seeks to foster collaboration among the government, the private sector and the academia to advance the research and development of chip technology. The Chips and Science Act has already attracted some of the world's top chip makers to invest in new factories in the United States. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company TSMC, the world's largest chip maker and a major supplier to Apple, announced that it will build a second factory in Phoenix, Arizona, in addition to the one that is already planned to construct. Samsung, another leading chip maker from South Korea, is also considering expanding its existing plant in Austin, Texas, or building a new one in another state. Intel, the largest US chip maker, has also pledged to invest $20 billion in two new factories in Arizona and to become a contract manufacturer for other chip designers. The US hopes that by boosting its chip production capacity, it can secure its supply chain, create jobs, and maintain its technological leadership, but it also faces a formidable competitor. China China's advances in chip manufacturing China is the world's largest consumer of chips, importing more than $300 billion worth of semiconductors every year. It's also the world's largest producer of electronic devices such as smartphones, laptops and TVs that use chips. But China's domestic chip industry is still lagging behind the global leaders in terms of quality and quantity. China relies heavily on foreign suppliers, especially from the United States, for the most advanced chips and equipment and materials needed to make them. The US has exploited this dependence as a leverage to contain China's technological ambitions. Since 2019, the US has imposed a series of export restrictions on Chinese companies and entities that are deemed to pose a national security threat or to be involved in human rights violations, as the US lawmakers claim. The most prominent target of these sanctions is Huawei, the Chinese telecom giant that is a leader in 5G and a rival to Apple and Samsung in many areas, especially in mobile phones. The US has banned Huawei from accessing US technology, including chips and software, effectively cutting off its lifeline and crippling its global business. But US sanctions have also backfired as they have spurred China to accelerate its efforts to develop its own chip industry and to reduce its reliance on foreign sources. China has invested billions of dollars in chip research and development and has launched several national initiatives and plans to support the chip sector. China has also encouraged its domestic chip makers such as SMIC, High Silicon and Unisoc to improve their capabilities and to expand their production capacity. According to a report by the Financial Times, China has secretly mastered how to produce chips using the 7 nanometer technology. The report claims that China has achieved this breakthrough by reverse engineering the technology from imported chips and equipment and by using its own software and design tools. 
The report also said that China has built a 7 nanometer chip factory in Shanghai, and it looks like it has already started mass producing in year 2023. If the report is true, it would mean that China has caught up with the United States in terms of chip capabilities as the 7 nanometer technology is currently used by the leading chip makers in the United States. It would also mean that China has overcome one of the biggest hurdles in its quest to become a chip superpower, as the 7 nanometer technology requires sophisticated equipment and materials that are subject to US expert controls. However, China still faces many challenges and uncertainties in its chip development. For one thing, the quality and reliability of China's 7 nanometer chips are still relatively unknown, and they may not be able to compete with the products of the established chip makers. For another thing, the US may impose more sanctions and restrictions on China's chip industry and may persuade its allies and partners to do the same. That's what's happening nowadays. Moreover, China may not be able to sustain its chip progress without access to the global talent pool, which is the key driver of innovation and creativity in the chip sector. China attracts global talent. The US has long been the destination of choice for the world's best and brightest minds in science and technology, especially in the fields of electrical engineering and computer science, which are crucial for the chip industry. The United States has attracted talent from all over the world, including from China, by offering world-class education, research and career opportunities, as well as a vibrant and open culture. Many of the foreign students and scholars who came to the US have stayed and contributed to the US innovation ecosystem and some have even founded or led some of the most successful tech companies such as Google, Nvidia and Zoom. But the US appeal as a magnet for global talent is eroding as the US faces political and social turmoil, immigration and visa restrictions and rising anti-China sentiment. The United States has also tightened its scrutiny and regulation of foreign researchers and students, especially those from China, over concerns of espionage and intellectual property theft. The US has accused some Chinese scholars and scientists of hiding their ties to the Chinese military or government and of transferring sensitive technology or data to China. The US has also restricted the participation of Chinese nationals in certain research projects and fields such as artificial intelligence and quantum computing. These measures have deterred and discouraged many Chinese and other foreign talent from coming to or staying in the US and have pushed some of them to return to their home countries or to seek opportunities elsewhere. According to a survey by the Institute of International Education, the number of new international students enrolled in US colleges and universities declined by 43% in the fall of 2020, and the number of Chinese students dropped by 37%. Another survey by the National Science Foundation found that the number of doctorate recipients in science and engineering who planned to stay in the United States after graduation fell from 69% in 2017 to 64% in 2019, and the number of Chinese doctorate recipients who planned to stay dropped from 85% to 77%. While the US is losing talent, China is gaining it. China is openly recruiting global talent and it's offering salaries, perks, grants, and teams that are many times what Western tech companies can offer. China is also providing a large and growing market, abundant resources and a strong government support for the tech sector. China has launched several programs and policies to attract overseas talent, such as the Thousand Talents Plan, the Thousand Youth Talents Plan and the National High and Foreign Expert Recruitment Plan. These programs aim to lure back Chinese talent who have studied or worked abroad as well as to attract foreign talent who have expertise and experience in a strategic field such as semiconductors, artificial intelligence, and biotechnology. By the way, we are planning to make a dedicated video on this subject under the title of China's approach to attracting overseas talent including poaching top semiconductor experts. Subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to get notified when we upload the video. China's talent recruitment efforts have paid off as more and more overseas talent, especially from the US, have joined China's tech industry. According to a report by Marco Polo, a think tank of the Paulson Institute, the number of US-educated Chinese returnees who work in China's tech sector increased by 384% from 2008 to 2018, and the number of US-educated non-Chinese who work in China's tech sector increased by 360 3%. The report also found that China's tech sector has become more diverse and international. 
as the share of non-Chinese employees rose from 1.3% in 2008 to 5.3% in 2018. Some of the overseas talent who joined China's tech industry have made significant contributions to China's cheap development. For example, Charles Cao, the co-founder and CEO of the SMIC, China's largest chip maker and the only one that can produce chips using the 40 nanometer technology. They might have actually done the 7 nanometer technology as well. He is a Taiwanese American who worked at TSMC and IBM before joining SMIC in 2019. He has helped SMIC a lot. The US response to China's progress. The Biden administration has acknowledged the threat posed by China's progress in the semiconductor industry and has taken some steps to address it. In June 2023, President Biden signed an executive order that aims to strengthen the US supply chain resilience and competitiveness in critical sectors, including semiconductors. The executive order calls for a comprehensive review of the US semiconductor ecosystem and for the development of a national strategy to support the domestic chip industry and to foster international cooperation with allies and partners. The executive order also prohibits US citizens and permanent residents from working in the Chinese semiconductor industry, citing national security and economic interests. The order states that US persons who work in the Chinese semiconductor industry may be subject to sanctions penalties or prosecutions and may lose their eligibility for U.S. government benefits or contracts. The order also warns that U.S. persons who work in the Chinese semiconductor industry may be exposed to espionage, coercion or theft of intellectual property. The executive order is seen as a response to China's what in quote, aggressive recruitment of global talent, especially from Taiwan, South Korea and the United States for its chip industry. The order aims to prevent the transfer of U.S. technology and know-how to China and to protect the U.S. talent pool from being drained by China. However, the order also faces criticism and challenges from various stakeholders such as the U.S. tech industry, the academic community and the civil society. Some critics argue that the order is too broad and vague and that it may violate the rights and freedoms of U.S. persons who work in the Chinese semiconductor industry. They contend that the order may infringe on the right to work, the right to privacy and the right to due process of U.S. persons who work in the Chinese semiconductor industry. They also question the effectiveness and enforceability of the order as it may be difficult to monitor and verify the activities and affiliations of US persons who work in the Chinese semiconductor industry. Other critics argue that the order is too narrow and weak and that it does not address the root cause of the problem. They assert that the order does not tackle the underlying factors that drive global talent to work in the Chinese semiconductor industry such as the lack of opportunities incentives and support in the U.S. semiconductor industry. They also suggest that the order does not offer a positive and proactive vision for the U.S. semiconductor industry and that it does not foster a culture of innovation and collaboration in the United States semiconductor ecosystem. The need for a comprehensive strategy. The U.S. and China are locked in a fierce competition for a global leadership in the semiconductor industry which is vital for the future of technology and economy. The U.S. is trying to preserve its edge by investing in cheap production and restricting China's access to technology. China is trying to catch up by advancing in cheap manufacturing and attracting global talent. The outcome of this competition will have profound implications for the balance of power and security and prosperity of both countries and the world. The Biden administration's response to China's progress in the semiconductor industry is too weak and too narrow. What the Biden administration is lacking is the fact that people are ultimate diffuser of global technology, not machines. The administration needs to recognize that the U.S. cannot ban free flow of global talent from the world to China, and that the U.S. needs to find better ways to compete for and retain the talent that is essential for the innovation and growth of the U.S. semiconductor industry. Comprehensive strategy should include the following elements. 1. A clear and consistent policy framework that defines the U.S. interests and objectives in the semiconductor industry and that balances the trade-offs between the security and competitiveness and between protection and openness. 2. A robust and sustainable investment plan that provides adequate and stable funding and incentives for the research, development and production of semiconductors in the U.S and that leverages the strength and resources of the government, the private sector, and the academia. 3. A flexible and fair immigration system that attracts and welcomes the best and brightest talent from around the world to study, 
work and innovate in the U.S. semiconductor industry and that respects and protects the rights and interests of U.S. persons who work in the semiconductor industry, whether U.S. or abroad. Four, a collaborative and constructive engagement strategy that fosters cooperation and dialogue with allies and partners in the semiconductor industry and that seeks to establish common standards and norms for the responsible and ethical use of semiconductors and related technologies. 5. A competitive and creative innovation strategy that nurtures a culture of excellence and diversity in the U.S. semiconductor industry and that encourages and supports the creation and diffusion of new ideas, products and solutions that can benefit the U.S. and the world. In conclusion, the United States and China are in race for the future of the semiconductor industry. Neither countries can afford to lose this race, nor can it win it alone. The U.S. administration needs to address the need for a comprehensive strategy that can harness the power of people, the most valuable asset in the semiconductor industry, and that can ensure the security and prosperity of the U.S. and the world. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Stay tuned for more Nanping TV videos.